All right, welcome back to the channel. It is me, Charlie Cowan, and this is the RevOps Charlie Demo Day series where I really enjoy getting to meet and to speak with technology vendors that are in the revenue ecosystem and helping you as the viewer to, to get a real insight into uh, the type of uh, companies that these technology vendors support, a little bit about some of the problems that they're solving for companies like you. And uh, we'll get a sneak peek to look at the platform a little bit later on. So today I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome Zach Otto from Gong to the channel. Uh, Zach, welcome. Thanks for coming on board. Yeah, thanks for having me, Charlie. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Um, so maybe to kick off, uh, for those uh, that don't obviously know you, but all know Gong, uh, perhaps you could take a moment just to introduce yourself, maybe your your role, and a little bit about Gong as a company. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm Zach Otto. I live in Chicago, Illinois, with my fiance and my dog. Um, <laughs> I work at Gong.io, which is a um, revenue intelligence platform. Um, it's actually been kind of a, a unique place to work because I've been here about two years now. And two years ago, we were kind of more in, um, you would say maybe like call recording space with a little bit of insights, um, pulling over CRM data. And since then, we've moved into a um, multi-product function and we're starting to tackle like a lot of problems that like sales teams are dealing with in their day to day and really becoming that like one central source of truth for people to operate out of. Mm. Yeah, a lot of um, uh, transition going on in that that market at the moment, but definitely from when I've heard of Gong initially, you know, it's call recording and it's it's helping people to uh, to get insight from from that. So when we think about the types of customers that you are uh, typically helping, what type of organizations are they, and and how are they coming to this this call recording uh, requirement? Yeah, for sure. Um... So they, they come in all different shapes and sizes, to be honest. Um, I think classically what we used to say is we'd say like a software company that is X number of reps that just received this round of funding. Um, but candidly, like in my market where I deal mostly in um, smaller commercial accounts, anywhere from three reps to around 30, mm -hmm. it is a lot of times um, people are coming to us at a big transition point in their business. So commonly we see where there is a founder leading the sales team or a CRO or VP of sales that's leading the sales team. And all of a sudden they've hired on reps and then they maybe have a BDR team as well. And if they're smart, they'll come to us like as soon as they mm -hmm. hire those people or before they hire those people. But um, more often than not, it ends up being a situation where they're like, Hey, like I have a whole team of reps under me. I was selling really well as a founder, as a CRO, and now I've got three or four people that are out there doing this job. I can watch back all these recordings. I can look at notes in the CRM, but like I'm having a really hard time understanding like what's going wrong in these sales cycles and even mm -hmm. better yet, like why are we even winning the ones we're winning? Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's dig into that a bit more because I was thinking in terms of call recording, it might be about... Um... Uh, I guess, like coaching and sort of helping a manager with one of their direct reports. But you're talking there about almost having this uh, bird's eye view down across the whole team. Yeah. Um, I think candidly, like a lot of times it comes in, people say like, yeah, like I got to, I got to get gone because we got to coach our reps. We got to figure out why we're not closing deals. Like I want to give feedback. And I think in their mind, it's going to be a little bit better way to watch calls back. But mm. where like the customer journey starts to come in is when we show that like the reason behind the coaching is because you're missing deals and there's better ways to figure out why you're missing deals and watching back calls at like 1.5 X speed. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I, I win a lot of deals because of coaching, but ultimately like people buy this thing because of like the analytics that you're going to get behind it. And it's mm. things that you'll even be able to share with like your board. When you've got this situation where a founder is then handing over sales over to maybe a new VP of sales or a new sales director, uh, there's maybe these five or 10 reps that are uh, now in the team and uh, the kinds of insights that they're trying to um, uncover by having call recording, what are they trying to glean out of it? Yeah. Um, 
so simple things like, are we using the verbiage and the language that I know helps close business? Mm. Um, so for example, like I was on a call yesterday with a founder and he was very clearly articulating to me like exactly how they help companies with their very specific problem. And he was mm. using like all this beautiful language to do it. And like, even me not being in their space, I clearly understand like what the problem they're solving for is. Mm. I built trackers for that and we have insights that are going to be able to show it. And we're showing that like nobody on the team is communicating like <laughs> yeah. anywhere sort close to that message. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like the crux of it is it, a lot of times um, you're building out a product and you're building on a company to solve a very specific problem. And like mm. you ultimately know exactly what that problem is. And if you were in that call, you'd be able to close because you'd be able to figure out like how you can help that customer. Mm. Um, but then you hire a rep who's been in the role for five months and they sold something that was maybe adjacent or maybe just completely different. And you, they can't communicate the value as strongly mm. as you. Yeah. Um, that's a piece of it. And then there's also things like, Hey, um, if I'm looking at all of my opportunities, like if I have five reps that are all running 10 real opportunities at any given time, um, I now have 50 deals that I have to look out after. And it's like, how do you know in mm. a glance where the risk is at in 50 different opportunities? Yeah. And how do you know that it's based on like the reality of what's happening? Not just crap that I typed into my CRM at midnight because my manager mm. was picking me about it. Yeah. And I'd, I'd love to talk a bit about the culture of call recording. So for, you know, for me, I see call recording as like a dash cam in a car, you know, it's on the whole time. And because you don't know when you're going to need it, you don't know when you're going to have that near miss and you're going to need that evidence. So you record everything. And then if something happens or you need to glean something, you've got access to it. And that's very much how I look at call recording is just record every meeting, record even the little check-ins, the things that you don't think are very important because you never know when the senior exec's going to pop in or when this question's going to get asked or, or, or whatever. And so across a company, having this culture that we record everything is so important and it gives you this this insight across the customers that you work with and i know you're mainly focused on the us but you might have an international feel or maybe some regulated industries do you see different segments of the market have a different approach or culture to this idea of recording yeah good question um I think candidly, like we 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 say as salespeople that like, hey, we have a ninety seven percent opt in rate, like it's not a problem, um, and it's it's usually not, but like there mm -hmm. are situations in which there is, um, and I think a lot of times it's just it's just kind of head trash. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, and I hope I like don't sound too arrogant saying this. It's. I mean, it's like when you're cold calling businesses and they say like, we're actually really unique. And then they explain mm -hmm. their problems and you're like, yeah, that's like exactly what we help solve for. A lot of people think that the information they're sharing, um, and this isn't a lot of people, this is maybe like five to 10% of the people that I talk to um, is so confidential that there's no way that it could ever be recorded. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact of the matter is, is we already work with customers that have way more confidential information than probably what they're talking about. Yeah, we work with yeah. three of the largest banks in the country, healthcare providers. Um, where, if you want specifics, I think usually the technology startups, uh, marketing companies, even like if you look at companies that are like pest elimination, things like that, that aren't even mm -hmm. like in tech or tech adjacent, they're they're usually recording their calls already or expecting calls um, where it starts to be a little bit more of an issue is um, in financial services where it's more old guard and it's perhaps mm. not as um, a young of a crowd. And maybe it's not as uh, forward thinking of leadership in terms of like understanding technology. Maybe they're just now starting to get into the CRM game Maybe mm. they're just starting to take calls over Zoom and the thought of hitting that button is like really daunting yeah. for them. Um, yeah. What's funny is like those are the people though that like end up liking it the most because they're the ones that like forget all this stuff on their calls. <laughs> yeah. To, you yeah. Know? yeah. So it goes, it always goes full <laughs> circle a lot of times. 
I, I started off my sales career working for one of the first ever cloud email security companies. Oh, wow. um, and um, before then, everyone would have these uh, servers that have antivirus patches and everything in their office. And we were the first uh, company to actually scan this stuff as it comes through the Internet. And all of the, the conversations are like, oh, you know, we don't want it going through you. We don't want you to be able to read our email. And you're going, let me just explain the w way that email travels around the world. Like it is unsecure the whole way. It's like a postcard. Yeah. Anyone can read it. We're the one safe bit. Um, and I, I feel a little, a little bit like with, with call recording, like you're worried about the call recording, but you're okay that I write everything you say down in a book. And then I get on a train and I leave my notebook on the train. So like the way that people are taking their notes today is insecure. And, um, uh, you know, this is actually the most secure way of doing it. That is a very good way to say it. Yeah. I'm going to use that actually. Honestly, it doesn't come up as much as yeah. it would even. It did, yeah. it did a lot more when I was calling into other industries. Um, mm -hmm. In the industry that I sell into now, it's like a mute point kind of. And it's yeah. probably very similar to the customers that you're working with today. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe some of a European flavor um, as well. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the types of, of customers that are coming into it. Um, you talked a lot about sales uh, people and sales reps. Is that the main uh, use case or do you see people using it for uh, customer success managers, for marketing, for uh, product interviews or, or any other use cases? Yeah, great question. Um, I think a lot of times the initial interest comes from the sales side of the house mm -hmm. but candidly like if you have a customer it's a lot easier to keep them than it would be to go out and try and get them again yeah um so a lot of times you see situations where people are adding on the account management team adding on the customer success team um i have an opportunity that i'm working right now where half of the opportunity i would say is their product management team like i'm spending half my time with them because mm -hmm. they've just launched a new SKU and they want to understand like how the reps are communicating it. Um, yeah, I think it's it's useful to all levels of the business. Anyone who's communicating mm -hmm. with customers, because um, like it or not, like customer success is sales, right? Yeah, you yeah. ask someone that's paying you money, a date's going to come in which they're going to determine whether or not they're going to continue to pay you money. And if we could tell you based on the context of every conversation that's happening, what the likelihood is that that account's going to churn, you'd have a better idea where to spend your time. So yeah, yeah definitely. Um, it's a pretty common thing where you'll roll it out to like four or five sales reps and then they'll be like, Oh, like, would this work with the account management team as well? And then mm. that's, that's usually a pretty like common yeah. thing to hear on calls. And I think definitely in one of the common themes on these demo day interviews is that there is a lot of tech out there. Uh, people could buy a new SaaS platform every day and uh, still run out of days in, in the year. And so um, uh, uh, revenue leaders, buyers, they've got to figure out where are they going to spend their dollars. And it comes back to, can you demonstrate to me that I'm going to sell more or it's going to cost me less? And so... Um, that obviously leads back to salespeople because it's an easier thing to link up. But how do you uh, discuss that with your customers about the the value, the economic value of uh, recording and analyzing calls? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think it's a lot of times what we do is we say like, okay, like what's your average sales size? Okay, it's a hundred dollars how many deals are you working at any given time? It's X number of deals. What's your average conversion rate? It's 10%. Okay. If we were to bump it up to 20%, what would that mean for your business? Mm. It would mean X more dollars. Um, and inside of Gong, a lot of times you could look at it as like almost a rev ops dream. Um, there is a way to take all of the qualitative things that are happening. So let's say in a call, I say like, Hey, Charlie, like Gong has seven times more data than our nearest competitor. Mm. I can then look at a phrase like that, pull it across all the data from my closed one opportunities and closed lost opportunities and understand if saying that phrase in the conversation helps me drive business forward. How does it actually directly affect my close rate? Um, and using that data 
it becomes a lot easier to justify the cost because you can show very clearly that if you were to increase the close rate by 10%, it easily justifies the cost of like what mm. the software is paying for. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. My, I'm yeah. waxing on too far for you. No, here. no, 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 no. It's, it's, um, you know, we're going to close bigger deals. We're going to have a higher conversion rate and we're going to bring them in faster is ultimately what, what a founder uh, or any revenue leader is looking at. It's like, how do I build certainly with the clients that I work with that are between series A and series B, it's about how do we build some predictability into our sales process? And that if I add in 10 more reps, can I guarantee that they will have the same level of performance as the first 10? And having this element of being able to, uh, A, help the new 10 listen in and understand from the 10 that have come before, uh, is helpful to help them with their onboarding, but also as a as a manager, I can look over the old ten and the new ten and, and figure out if there's discrepancies there. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, when it was hot, people were hiring people like no other, right? Mm. And the business is good, and those reps maybe were not very good, and they were still closing revenue. Today, people are a lot more conservative if they're actually bringing mm. people on, and if they're bringing people on, like how are they setting them up for success? Mm. I mean, if you're up for it, it'd be lovely to to see the tool and uh, a little bit about how you um, would explain that to a, a potential customer. Yeah, for sure. So basically, if you think about what we're doing over here at Gong, like I'm going to talk us through like the actual platform, but think about like every single customer facing conversation that's happening today. Um, you've got calls like this on Zoom or Teams, you have calls that are going out on cell phones or dialers, there's emails being sent back and forth, there's calendar invites. And what we do is we capture every single one of these customer facing interactions, we pull it in our system, and we bump artificial intelligence up behind it. And what we have built is essentially the largest database of sales interactions. Um, there's about 2 billion conversations in here. And what that means is we have a really deep understanding of like, what is actually happening in these calls. So it is understanding what the reps are talking about when they're presenting price, understanding if they're setting up next steps, it's able to show you what things are actually driving forward in your business. Basically, we're taking like all these data points and we're putting brains behind it. And as you like enter the space, like there's a lot of people that claim they do what we do. And a lot of them are just like chat GPT repackaged as a transcribing tool. Where Gong is unique is the fact that like we're three times more accurate. So we understand the concepts, not just the keyword. So if I said, hey, Charlie, like I was in the UK last year and like, holy crap, you'll never believe how expensive like a cup of coffee was. Basic tools are going to hear that and go like, oh, Zach thinks what Charlie's selling is like too expensive. Like this is a risk and objection. Mm. Gong's intelligent enough to understand that we're talking about coffee. We're not talking about anything to do with a product. Um. And part of what that's built on is like having five times more data and then ultimately like double the amount of integrations as anyone else in the space as well. So this is like where I usually start off a lot of my conversations. So you think mm -hmm. about what Gong is going to do is it's going to automatically attach itself to all the emails, the calls, the um, Zoom calls that are going out as well. And like there's no change management that has to come for the rep's perspective mm -hmm. or the leader's perspective that just start getting calls in here. Um, and what we're doing is we're looking at a conversation that I had earlier this week. I can see things like, hey, who was in this call? How much time did they talk for? And where it starts to get interesting is in this. So this is the transcription of the entire call. 97% um, accurate. It's better than Alexa, better than Siri. And what I do with that is I start to use AI to understand what's actually happening in the call. So mm -hmm. I can see things like, hey, where's our small talk? You see Caleb talking about my mustache. <laughs> or I can see something like, hey, where's be me being prescriptive and like understanding what the next steps in the conversation are? So these are themes. This falls into understanding like what the theme is of the call, not just keywords. And Gong is understanding what's happening with each of these themes. Mm. Any questions so far? Like anything that's like top of mind? Uh, no, that's that's super helpful. So, so is this being are these topics kind of uh, automated through the platform or uh, customers setting up? This is what I'm looking for. Good question. Um, 
so there is a different part of the platform in which we can prime it to look for specific things. But this is something that's like proprietary to Gong here. It's unique and differentiating us in the space is we are actually understanding what's happening in the call without you having to tell us what it is. Okay. And it's smart enough when I set this up for customers, it'll pick up simple things like pricing, small talk, next steps. But as it listens to more calls, it'll also learn what your products are, what are some of your unique differentiators, things of that nature. And it'll start to show you those things automatically as well. A couple more things over here in the points of interest side. This would be where I would tell Gong to start to look for things. Um, and a lot of times, these are what other basic call recording tools are doing. Um, we do it better than anyone else, of course, because we have more data behind us and we actually like understand what's happening in the call. But where the magic starts to come in is moving beyond tracking these basic keywords and into understanding concepts. So we have the medic sales methodology here. Mm. So I can use that, plug it into Gong and tell it what is Medic? What are the things that we're looking for with Medic? And I can find things like, hey, who's identified themselves a champion in this deal? Or what's their decision criteria? These are things that I've told Gong to look for. Mm -hmm. But I, as a rep, am not filling out a CRM field about what the decision criteria is my leadership can go in and hear it from the actual customer's mouth. Like yeah. what have they said the actual decision criteria is? And I, I was I was writing something just this week about uh, handovers between teams. So a typical one, handover from the AE and the sales uh, solution architect over to the onboarding team or into the CSMs. And those things are typically like, oh, we need to book a meeting. It's an hour long meeting. Um, but then coming up towards it, the AE says, can we move it? Because I'm now working on another deal. And actually, can we just do half an hour? And actually, you just need to speak to this guy, Dean. He was a really nice guy. The handover just sort of disappears because everyone's too busy on, on what they're doing. But this gives like a, an onboarding person or a CSM the ability to look for the word architecture or to look for the word project plan or something and then just go straight to that information which i think could be really handy exactly yeah um even better yet if i go into a call let's say i'm a csm and i get this account i can go here and this is the call spotlight um so this is our own proprietary engine that's built with this um it's not chat gpt repackaged it's actually gong's deep understanding of sales calls and I can come in here and see an easy write-up of everything that we discussed in this conversation. And I can even click into this and see what were they trying to talk about. So we could see what they identified as the benefits of Gong and what did they think of it? What did Caleb exactly think was interesting? So I'm going to start with um, the looking at the overall like health of a team and understanding like what key themes are happening with accounts and how do we know what is moving deals forward and what good looks like. Um, a lot of times you'll hear people will come on and they'll say like, hey man, I have like one rep that does really well. And then I have four that are not. And I think I know why that one rep is closing business or maybe I think I understand why I'm closing business. But it's challenging to actually like quantitate what those mm -hmm. themes are. So what this is, is if you remember back to um, when I was showing you Gong, understanding the themes of what's happening, I can look at something simple like small talk. So an average who's spending the most time like building rapport with the customer and having small talk with them. But an even more important one is next steps. So Gong data shows that top performing salespeople on average are spending a minute and 30 seconds being prescriptive with what the next logical step in the sales process is. It's very, very important. Um, I can come in here and see that, hey, I have some folks that are really doing above and beyond. Um, they're being very prescriptive, but some of my newer reps are not really hitting it up as much as they should be. So maybe there's an opportunity to come in here to say to BJ, like, Hey man, like let's look in at some of these calls and like figure out why we're not being as prescriptive with customers as we need to be. Mm -hmm. Um, you go into any different part here, you could see like, Hey, on average, who's spending the most time acting discovery questions. Kimmy is asking discovery questions for like on average two minutes of a conversation, but in an even simpler format, 
the meat and potatoes of sales calls, right? Like who's talking the most, how long is the customer story? I can look in here and see like, Hey, who's getting customers to open up the most on average, Joe is getting customers to speak for almost two minutes, two minute monologue on average. Like that's awesome. That's huge. There's a ton of gold in those conversations, mm. but some of my newer reps are only doing it for like less than a minute, maybe a half a minute at the most. Um, so this is all data that you can use to like drive your business forward. Like understanding, of course, like the basics behind, Hey, what is actually happening in these calls? Like this is looking at every single conversation from the bird's eye view and seeing the overall themes. Mm. And it, you know, if you're not using a, a call recording platform that you just don't have this kind of data, you can't be in every meeting. You can't, travel around especially with everyone working from from home so you, you just don't have this level of insight exactly um in my first company i worked out of out of college uh it was in like commercial insurance um and we would always talk about like why do some people close more business than others and and the hunch from sales leadership that they ultimately rolled out and like spent a lot of money investing in was that the people that were closing the most business ex exhibited the most industry expertise. Mm. And it's like, okay, maybe probably, but you're not in every one of those calls. You don't have any way to understand like how often they're actually exhibiting that industry expertise. And you're going to build out a program for millions of dollars based around a hunch. Mm. Right. With gong, you can actually understand like, if that is the case, and if it's not the case, let's figure out what it is and build out our business around that. I can get things like this. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking every single time that a competitor is brought up mm. and I am pulling that across my win loss ratio for the last year for my entire team. So hundreds of sales cycles, hundreds of closed ones and a lot of closed loss as well. Mm. Now with that data, I can see our number one competitor in the market, you Google it, you figure out what the, who they are. Every time they come up in my sales cycle, I actually win more deals when that comes up. So as a business, I know I'm not going to invest a million dollars in like competitive differentiator and like take all my sales team off the floor. I'm going to talk about it. And it's important, but I can know that when it, it comes up, it actually like helps me. And I actually, actually win helps. more deals this yeah. way. Yeah. In one place. Mm. Well, it's um, uh, it's been really helpful to see uh, both the the seller's experience, but also hear the real power of by having this bird's eye view, uh, how you can make strategic decisions um, across the business. Um, as uh, a, a revenue leader, what's the best way of getting in touch with uh, with Gong uh, or with yourself? Yeah. Um... Easiest way is to go on our website and just hit request a demo. Um, if you're in the UK, you will go to our Mia team over there. Um, or alternatively, you can reach out to me. It's zach.auto at gong.io. Um, and I'll make sure that you get in touch with the right person. That is awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the, the channel today, Zach. It's been a great, uh, great overview. And um, uh, thank you so much. For sure, man. Nice talking with you. Cheers.